Okay, so let's start, <clears throat> Sanjeev. Yes. And since you were able to watch the training video earlier, so it will be easier for us to do this training. Okay, and I will just be repeating some of the uh, information that I have shared earlier. So this recording will be complete. Okay. So again, this is the LG and our campaign is all about janitorial services. Okay. So as <coughs> I've mentioned to you earlier, there will be three people involved on the call. Okay, so these are what we have discussed earlier. So I'll just paste it here again. Okay. So as we have discussed earlier, there are three people involved on our call, the appointment setter, the sales representative who will go to the customer's office, and the scheduling manager who will give the date and time of the appointment. Okay, so just so you know, guys, we have a... Uh, these are the things that uh, your agent must always remember to make the appointment valid because we <coughs> appointments are all valid what are the things i just would like to uh, give emphasis on this so first, genuine interest. Okay, so you're, you must get an affirmative yes from your customer. Okay, your customer must say yes, that they want to make the appointment. Yes, that they want to meet the rep. And yes, that they want to use us as a backup if they already have a cleaning service. Or they want to outsource it from us. So we will discuss this in a few. But bottom line, guys, you must get an affirmative response from your customer. It should be a yes for the appointment. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, the second parameter that we have here is talking to the right person. So talking to the right person, this is an opportunity that we are getting right now. So listen very carefully, everyone. You must speak to the decision maker, the decision maker who will hire janitorial company. It may or may not be the owner. It can be a manager. It can be an assistant. So whoever is the person in charge of their janitorial services, you need to speak to that person. Okay? And to make sure you are talking... Person, you must get the following information. So, what are those? The full name, the job title, and the business name. sure you ask for the full name so ma'am can i speak to the person in charge of the cleaning in your office yes that'll be me can i have your full name please that that will be olivia lopez how about your job title i am the owner and can you confirm your business name okay that's olivia or that's lopez enterprise so please make sure you capture all those information because you will be needing that when you transfer the call to the scheduling manager okay now frequency and monthly minimum price i'll skip that for uh skip on that for now i'll go to solid day and time so please remember that our appointments are set the following week okay supposing you will log in on monday that's july 5 the appointment will be from july 12 to july 16 or if the, uh, if the customer will not be available next week, 
we can do it the week after that, which is on the 19th to the 23rd. Now, here's the question if you were listening, guys. Say, for example, customer said yes, and the uh, customer will be available next week for an appointment. But customer asks you what date and time will be their appointment. What will be your response? What will you tell the customer? Will you give the date and time? No, no, we won't give them the No, time. okay. Who we will give the know. date and time? Uh, our manager who will be fixing him an appointment, he will let him know about the date and the time. And Who, the, who's the, the person? person uh, the appointment manager. It's the Who's scheduling that? manager. Scheduling manager, sorry. Scheduling manager. Okay, very good. Now let's go to frequency and monthly minimum price. Guys, frequency, this is the number of times that the customer is cleaning their office. So we have a minimum cleaning requirement. Okay. Yeah. We we are doing a regular cleaning. Okay. I uh give me a second here. Yeah. Okay, please take a look at what I have chatted here. As I have mentioned, we are doing a weekly cleaning and we have a minimum cleaning requirement that's once a week. So if we're saying once a week, how many times is that in a month? Four times. Four times, okay. Once a week is four times in a month. Okay, so we're doing a weekly cleaning. Give me a sec. So once a week is four times in a month because it's a weekly it's a weekly regular cleaning. Okay. Now, if once a week is qualified, how about two times per week, three times, four times, or five times a week? Are they qualified to? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. They're, very much, They're very much qualified because our minimum is just once a week. So if customer is cleaning two times per week or more, they are very much qualified. Now, what if the what if the customer is doing once a month? Is he qualified? No. No, he's not qualified. But what if customer wanted to take our service? Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do? Guys, we need to ask the customer this question. Okay, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, if customer is doing once a, once a month or two times per month, you need to ask this. You need to ask if the customer is actively seeking to increase their cleaning from once a month to once a week. If customer agrees, they said yes, then he becomes qualified. Okay, now it says here, if customer is doing once a week cleaning, we need to follow up with going over the monthly minimum price. So how much is our monthly minimum price based on the module? How much? $50 per month. $250 per month. Okay. So once a week cleaning is charged for $250 per month. Okay. Here's the question. If once a week cleaning is $250 per month, that is, two, 
that is four times cleaning in a month, right? Four or five times, depending on how many weeks there is in a month. And that is $250. So how much is two times per week? That is eight times in a month. How about three times per week? How much is that? Four times or five times in a week? How much will that cost the customer? Uh, that will be only done after the representative pays him a visit and he does the estimation. Very good, David. So you we will not. Commitment. Very good. We will not tell the price because we are not the sales rep. The sales rep needs to go to the office and conduct an estimate like what David said. Because the sales rep needs to do a walkthrough, check the facility, check the flooring, the bathroom, and other things that needs to be cleaned. Okay? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. So we're good with this. This, again, you want a valid appointment. You will not be paid if your appointment is not valid. So you need to follow these parameters. Okay, genuine interest, you must get an affirmative response. You need to talk to the decision maker. Okay, then frequency, they must at least doing a once a week cleaning. And they must agree to our monthly minimum price. The, uh, they, uh, the day of the appointment will be next week and the scheduling manager will be the one to give the date and time. Are we clear? Yes. Okay. Now let's go to the types of services that you will be receiving when you start taking calls. So we have outsource, in-house, building management, and corporate office. Who can tell me what is outsource and in-house? Anyone? Well, outsource is if I'm dependent on someone else apart from someone in my office and someone is doing that thing on behalf of me not being inside of our organization it's outsourced and if we are taking care of it by ourselves from our end it's in-house okay very good very good david so if the cleaning is done by somebody else which is a company okay make sure it's a company so we call it outsource like us we are a janitorial company right we are offering our services that that's why we are calling them and we are a janitorial company so make sure guys that when you say outsource the customer is or the customer already has a company like us who cleans their office. Now, say for example, they already have. Customer said, oh, I already have a current uh, cleaning company here and uh, they're doing a good job. So the question is, will you just let go of the customer? Okay, ma'am, I'm sorry to have called you. Thank you and goodbye. Is that it? No. Will you let go of the customer if they already have a cleaning company in place? Yes or no? Definitely not. No. no. Yes. We will still try to give him at least our option. At least Very good. give them our quotation. Very good. Okay. So at least you will not just give up, right? Don't give up that. Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank you for your time. No, do not do that. We need to at least provide a rebuttal. What is our rebu rebuttal? So tell the customer, ma'am, I understand you already have a janitorial company in place, but we do not mind being used as a backup. So what do we mean by backup, guys? Remember the frequency yes. that they are, maybe they only have once a week cleaning and the cleaning is done on a Monday. So we can be a backup during the other days of the week. Is that clear? Or we can tell the customer, ma'am, it's okay. If you already have a cleaning company, we just would like to give you a free proposal in case your current company is not doing a good job anymore. Okay? So they can take us instead. Very good. 
Now, for in-house, as David mentioned, customers do not have a cleaning company in place and they are just taking care of their own space. They're just doing the cleaning on their own. Or maybe a relative or a friend is doing the extra cleaning in their office. So they do not have a company yet. Now, before, everybody listen. Before you mention or before you pitch in, you need to ask this question. And it must be asked verbatimly. So what's the question? Customer is doing in-house. Customer doesn't have an outsourced company. So we ask the customer first, ma'am or sir, are you actively seeking to outsource your janitorial services now or in the near future? It must be a yes before you proceed. Please ask this verbatim, okay? If you fail to ask this in an in-house customer, your call will be invalid. Are we clear on that? Need to memorize this. Please memorize this right now. Are you actively seeking to outsource your janitorial services now or in the near future? Okay. Are we good? Good. Now, we, we also have leads that are building management. So what do we mean by building management? So for building management, you reach a customer, you, you reach a decision maker that is renting in a building. And they are not the ones in charge of the cleaning, but it's the building because their cleaning services is included in the lease agreement for the office. So if you receive a call that they are renting in a building, all you need to do is to ask the name of the building that they are renting in, or you can ask for a number or the name of the building owner or the building manager or the facility manager. And that facility manager is the one that you need to, to call and set appointment with. Are we clear? Very clear. Thank you. Now, if it's a corporate office, guys, we do not handle corporate offices. Why? Because our purpose is to talk to the right person, right? We need to talk to the decision maker. And if it's a corporate office, normally the decision maker is the, or the board of directors, maybe the CEO, the COO, or the president of the company. And obviously, we cannot put them on the phone with us. You agree? Yeah, sure. So if you, Thanks. if your lead says that their cleaning is being done through their corporate office, all you need to do is just to thank the customer for taking your call and take and uh, go to your next call. Clear? Okay. So those are the types of janitorial services if you will notice building management and corporate offices they are also doing outsource so technically you can remember outsource and in-house for our types of janitorial services okay now let's put them all together let's put everything together on this rule okay we have a rule to follow Everyone, please listen very carefully because this is very, very important. This is the rule. If your customer is doing in-house, so you ask, are you actively seeking to outsource your janitorial services now or in the near future? And customer said yes. So you can proceed. So ma'am, are you doing outsource or in-house? Okay, in-house. So how many times... Or how frequently you want the cleaning to be done? Customer said once a week. It says here the rule, you must mention the once a week cleaning of $250. Okay, in-house, once a week, you must mention monthly minimum price. Now, if 
in-house, but customer wanted the cleaning to be done two times, three times, four times, or five times in a week. It says here, you must mention the monthly minimum price for once a week cleaning. So even if the customer wanted five times a week cleaning, you will just say once a week cleaning. Are we good? Because you do not know yeah. how much, right? How much is five times a week? Who can, how much, if customer will ask you how much is five times a week, what will you tell the customer? 20, 20, 20 times. Five times you will tell the customer, ma'am, I do not have the price for that, but our sales rep will give you the pricing once he visits your office. Are we good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, for outsource, this is the rule. Outsource, they already have a cleaning company in place. It's okay. We don't mind being used as a backup. Okay, ma'am. Your current service, how many times does do they do the cleaning with you? Or oh, just once a week? Okay. If it's once a week, you must mention the monthly minimum price. Okay, that's the rule. Now, if customer is doing outsource, they already have a cleaning company in place, and the current janitorial company is cleaning two times, three times, four times, or five times in a week, what is the rule? No need to mention the price. So how's that, ma'am? You're doing outsource. How many times does your current cleaner clean your office? Or oh, they actually come here three times per week. Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time. I will now connect you to my scheduling manager for your appointment. So no need to mention the price. Are we good? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Now, once you're done with this, then you will now transfer the call to our scheduling manager so let me give you this information so guys i am sharing with you a document and you can print this out maybe post it on your drives so you will have a guide on what are the things that you need to do on your calls okay Give me a sec. my microphone okay guys i have shared with you a document Give me a sec. Okay, so let's do this. You will now transfer the call to the scheduling manager and this is our script. And this is how we're going to transfer. 
So in transferring a call to the scheduling manager, we will be using the Vichy dial. So Sanjib said he is familiar with Vichy dial. So this is our Vichy dial. Uh, excuse me, just uh, if uh, here if anybody has any uh, trouble with Vizdel or want to know how Vizdel works, Olivia, is it possible that somebody can guide them? I'm sorry. Uh, this was one of my team members. They are not familiar with Vizdel. Did you and you can guide them online? You were training us. Somebody who can do it. Um, your line is breaking up. I really did not understand you. Okay. Uh, let me type, the, type in the question. Let me type yes, in the please. question. Hello, uh, did you get my question? Sanjeev, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. So, uh, will we be using any soft phone along with Vichy dial? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Because we'll receive the calls uh, on the dial itself. I don't think we will we'll make any other calls apart from the Vichy dial. Okay, so uh, if in case we need to schedule an appointment, we need to transfer the call to the scheduling manager. Uh, yes. In that case, we can just uh, press the transfer conference and whatever number is required, you can just dial in, I guess. Uh, so it might yeah, be a prefix. Was, um, yeah, I believe uh, Olivia will be the right person to answer that actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, will we be using a soft phone too? If required, can you arrange a training? On yeah, we're doing it right now, actually. And our Vichy dial. Okay, this is our VT dial. Uh, give me a moment here. Okay, let me finish first. So this is our VT dial. Okay, kindly open that link and save it on your browser. VT dial is web-based. Okay, so you can use Chrome. 
Mr. Mozilla. And this is your question. It has a built-in web phone. So no need to download any cell phone. Okay. It has a built-in web phone and it looks like this. Our beachy dial looks like this. Okay, this is the interface of the Vichy dial. Okay, and this is how you will transfer the call using Vichy dial. I will show you how to do it, so please, give me a moment. Okay, so when you transfer the call to Chris, You need to follow five steps, okay? When you transfer the call to Chris, no need to use this web phone. No need. No, you will not use the web phone when you transfer the call to Chris. You will use the transfer conference functions, okay? So this is, this is, uh, these are the steps on how you will transfer. So number one, you need to click the transfer conference. Where is that? Here is the transfer conference. Can you see it? Okay, click transfer conference. And once you click the transfer conference, a window will pop out here below the comment box. Okay, the window looks like this. Look at the half part of this screen. It says transfer conference functions. So this will show up. Now number two, click the closer group. This is the closer group, so click it. Number three, put a tick mark on the consultative box. Okay, and then number four, dial with customer. Once you click dial with customer, you will be talking to Chris. Chris will be on the conference call. And this so is the a hot transfer. Hello, yes. It will be a hot transfer, Olivia. Sorry? Like the customer will stay with me on the line and over there yes. I will dial Chris. Okay. Yes. Once you click dial with customer, then you are still with your customer and then Chris will come in. Okay. And this is what you will tell Chris. Okay. Hi, Chris. I have Olivia Lopez here. She is the owner of Lopez Enterprise. And she is set for you to schedule. And then Chris will tell you, okay, connect the customer now. Then tell the customer, thank you, thank the customer. And then go back to Chris. Then you need to leave the call. Click leave three-way call. Once Chris acknowledges the customer. Let me repeat. Okay, so this is your screen. Customer said yes, okay, transfer me now. So click transfer conference. And then click closer group. Then followed by the tick mark on the consultative box. Followed by dial with customer. So it's simultaneous. Now once you, you click dial with customer, you need to wait for Chris. So, Chris, I have the customer with me. And then, leave, click leave three-way call to exit the call. Do not listen to Chris and the customer anymore. Are we clear? Yes. Now, after clicking leave three-way call, guys, your next screen will be the call disposition page. This is how it looks like. This is the call disposition page. Okay. So what will be your disposition? So listen, guys, listen. 
If it's a transfer call, if you're transferring call to Chris, do not use sale or transfer. No. No, no, no. Okay. You will disposition your call if it's a transfer. Transfer call to Chris must select not interested. Olivia, why not interested? I transferred the call and customer was interested. Why? Because after transferring a call, you need to submit an appointment sheet. This is the appointment sheet. And the appointment sheet looks like this. Kindly download the appointment sheet and save it on your drive. The appointment sheet look like, looks like this. So you need to fill it out after you transfer the call. Okay. These items that I am... These items that I am... Highlighting, you need to leave them blank. Okay. So on the appointment sheet, the company name, you're asking this. Contact name, you're asking. Contact title, you're asking this from the customer. Address and telephone number, you can get it from the dialer. Here. Here's the address. Here's the phone number. Okay. Are we good? Yes. Okay. So yes. you need to fill out an appointment sheet. So after filling out, submit the appointment sheet to Sanjeev. Okay. And then Sanjeev will submit LG using the Google Drive. So Sanjeev, we will create a Google Drive for you once you have your first appointment and we will have a training on that, okay? Okay, yes, fine. Now, here's the deal, here's the question. So you're done with the call, take your next call. Now here's the question. Before you transfer the call to Chris, you must write something on the comment box. This is the comment box. Okay, for example, this is your comment box. This is your dialer. Okay, this is your dialer. Okay, this is your dialer, right? So, before you click transfer conference, you must write information here. Here's the comment box. Can you see the comment box? So, you must yes. write information. You must write it before, okay, before transferring the call to Chris. Before clicking transfer conference. So, what are this information? Okay. On the comment box, you need to write the type of service, either outsource or in-house. If it's outsource, you type the letter O, okay? If it's in-house, you type the letter I. Are we good? Yes. Now, put a space or a comma, then followed by the frequency. So, if customer is doing three times per week, you must write 3x. Are we good? If customer is doing everyday cleaning, you must write either 5x or 7x. Okay? Okay. Now put a space or a comma, and then you need to write the last information, calendar number. So where would you get the calendar number? It says here from the campaign assignment. So what is the campaign assignment? 
Sanjib. Yes. Okay. Before you dial, you need to shout out. Shout out your attendance before the start of your shift. So example, you have five agents, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, one after shouting out, Yuri, our campaign manager, will send you the campaign assignment. Okay. Okay. And the campaign assignment, it looks like this. This is how the campaign assignment looks like. Okay. So everyone look at my screen, please. You will be asked to log in on a campaign once you start taking calls. And this is how the campaign looks like. Okay, so you're looking at my screen now? Yes. Okay. The number on the left, 101, 102. Okay. This is not, not the calendar number. No, no, no. Okay, disregard this number. Okay. okay. Now, the calendar number is on the campaign assignment so for example this is the campaign that was given to you so listen very carefully everyone we have 200 campaigns on the dialer but you will not dial them all in one day so there will be an assignment assigned campaign to you so for example these are the assigned campaign to you guys okay so <clears throat> these are schedule and these are the campaign names so say for example miami this is our dialer right so say for yes. example your assignment is miami so you will select miami from the dialer yes okay now you will dial miami from 9 9 a.m to 12 noon eastern time you will dial Miami for three hours. Now, once the clock ticks 12, you will log out from Miami and switch to Sacrament campaign. Are we good? So you need to look, sacram look for the Sacrament campaign here at 12 noon Eastern. So you will dial Sacrament, sacrament campaign for th another three hours. Okay, but again, guys, this may change, okay? It can be like this. So if this is the time given, you will dial the campaign for five hours. Are we good? Okay, yes. Yes. This may change, okay. Now, after the Miami or after the campaign name, you will see this number. And this is the calendar number. Okay, so what is the uh, calendar it, it, number it in Miami? What is the calendar number in Miami? 131. 131. So this is what you will write here. 131. If you have a sale, customer said outsource once a week. So you will type here 131 because your sale is from the Miami campaign. Are we good? Yes. If it's Sacrament, what number will you write here? 115. 115. Okay, now I have a question. What if you have type here 155? 
instead of 115, you type 155. What do you think will happen? Uh, it will be invalid. What do you think will happen? So Denver is 155 and Sacramento is 115. So what do you think will happen? Your appointment, your transfer will be invalid. We or the scheduling manager will not be able to set the appointment because you gave a, a wrong calendar. The calendar that we are pertaining here, guys, is a real calendar number. And it's a real calendar. It's a Google calendar like this. Like this. So that's why the sales rep, uh, the scheduling manager has an access to this. And she's the only one who can set the date and time of the appointment. But you are doing or you have a very big role because you are the one who will give the calendar number to the scheduling manager. Are we clear? Yes. But it has to be filled by every person who takes a call, right? Sorry? Uh, this calendar number, the comment. Okay. It has to be filled by every agent who were on yes. the call. Yes. Okay. Yes. You need and to write this number on the... Here. On the comment box. You do not okay, need to but, tell uh, Chris. Hey, Chris, the calendar number is 115. No. You just need to write it here. The customer should not hear that. Okay. That's yeah, why that's we fine. are writing here uh, on the comment box before we transfer the call to Chris. Okay? So, like, uh, uh, whenever we select a campaign or someone logs into a different campaign, is there a possibility that whenever I'm inside a campaign, the calendar number will be in front of my eyes or something like that in the dialogue? Yes, definitely. Uh, be before the, the start of the shift, we will give this to Sanjib. And Sanjib will give this to you. So you have to take note. If you're logged in Miami, the calendar number should be 131. Okay? Okay. Guys, <clears throat> I am interpreting to you what are this information. Okay, so 9 to 12, you will be dialing this campaign. 12 to 3, you will be dialing this campaign. So you do not need to select your own campaign. I want Denver. I want LA, LA Orange. No, you cannot. You need to follow the schedule. Are we okay. clear? Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, this information, the $215, $250, and $325, guys, these are the once per week cleaning of uh, monthly minimum price. So maybe you're going to ask me, so Olivia, it's not always 250 yes it may change depending on the location so in miami the once per week cleaning monthly minimum price is only 215 dollars okay now in la orange if this is your campaign the once per week is 325 dollars per month now, okay. maybe you've noticed why in Denver there is no amount, okay? If you have a campaign that has no amount, it means you will not discuss any pricing, zero. No need to mention any price. Remember the rule? If it's outsourced once a week, we mention the price, right? Because it's once a week. But if there's yeah. no given number or given amount, you do not need to say anything. Zero. Clear? You will see MMT per VH. Okay? Are we clear? Yes, we are clear. Okay. Now, this information, this uh, name from better to best, Avalon, Key People Cleaning, Ultimate Cleaning Solutions. Guys, these are janitorial companies. And these are 
we will use this janitorial company name to brand our call. For example, okay, you are logged in Miami. You will say, hi, this is Olivia, and I am calling from Better to Best Cleaning. Okay, now you're logged in Sacramento. What will you say you're calling from? Hi, this is Sanjeev. I'm calling from Avalon, Custodial. Avalon Custodial Care. If you're logged in Denver, you will say hi. I am calling from Key People, Key People Cleaning. Cleaning. Okay, if you're logged in LA Orange, I am calling from Ultimate Alchemy. Cleaning Solutions. Are we good? Yes. Any question on the yes. campaign assignment? Uh, David and team, do you people have David, any question? Any on question? Do you no. have any questions? Nothing. No, ma'am, no question. Uh, question clarification, please. If the car. Lian, Sonu, Anorm, David, any question? Anuj? No, ma'am, no okay. question, so. Okay. Now, how many are you here? Great. We have five agents, right? Five or six agents on the call. Now, we only have three scheduling manager. So, say, for example, the six of you, you have a sale and you are transferring the call to the scheduling manager. So you are six and our scheduling managers are only three. So the three agents can transfer to Chris, but the other three, they will not be able to talk to Chris because Chris will be on or engaged on a call. So what will the three agents do? Okay, so if scheduling manager did not pick up, you will say, I am sorry, Miss Customer. It appears my scheduling manager is currently scheduling with another client. I will have her call you back within five to ten minutes. Is that okay? Customer said it's fine. So, question, who will call the customer back? Is it you or is it the scheduling manager, Chris? Chris. Who? It will be Chris who will be calling back, not us. Who will call the customer back? Chris. Chris. Scheduling manager. Scheduling manager, very good. However, <laughs> you were not able to talk to Chris, right? So how would she know that you have a transfer? You need to fill out a form. This one. Can you? And once, kindly, guys, save it again. Kindly open the call, transfer callback form and save it. And this is how you need to fill it up. Okay. So this is the transfer callback form. Now, on the first part, you will find list name. So on the list name, everyone listen, you need to write the complete campaign assignment. You need to write the complete campaign assignment, okay? So how's that? So say for example, this one, the campaign name on the dialer is Knoxville. The calendar number is 122. The monthly minimum price is 125 only. And the janitorial company is Clear Look Janitorial. Are we clear? You yes. will submit yes. this form if you're not able to talk to Chris. Then you type your center name, Omnitech, your name. Here, the name of the, uh, the company name of the customer, the name of the customer, and the job title. And most importantly, the phone number. 
you can get the phone number here. Any question? No question. Now, guys. Can you read this? Hello. Now, listen very Hello. Hello. Listen, guys. Hello. Okay, kindly take note of this. Kindly save the email web form because we want you to always capture an email address. I have something to show you that's very interesting. Kindly save the file for email address. Okay, can you see this? Okay, look at this, guys. Can you see the audio link column here? And uh, the those in red fonts, it says EMSS. Guys, these are appointment from email addresses. Isn't it amazing? Most of this, uh, this is actually a tracker of a center. Uh, uh, they are one, uh, this center is one of our top notcher here. And look at the their sales. Most of their sales are from email address, from email. So this really works. Whenever you have a call, customer said they're not interested, mm -hmm. capture the email address. And you need to fill this out, the email web form. Guys, are you listening to me? Uh, yes. 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 Okay, so what will you get from the customer if they're not interested? Email address. Email address, very good. Okay, you need to get their email address. Okay. Now, we will also be receiving a lot of answering machines. And this is what you're going to do if it's an answering machine. We will always leave a voicemail message. So again, listen very carefully, please. If you receive a call that says, please leave your, uh, the person you're calling is not available. Please leave your message after the beep. So click transfer conference. And then click the VM button here. Can you see the VM button? It's very, very small, but it's very powerful. Why? When you click the VM button, guys, you need to keep quiet. Do not say a word. Because there will be a pre-recorded message that will play. And if the, call, if the customer calls back, Mike receives the call. He's the one who's receiving call. So he sets the appointment. That appointment will be your appointment. We will pay you for that answering machine call. Like this one. It says here, drop from Gemma. Gemma is also a counterpart of Mike. She is receiving answering machine calls. And this agent left a voicemail message. So she got an appointment from an answering machine. Isn't it awesome? Here's another one. So agent got a sale from an answering machine. Isn't it amazing, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is very amazing. So we have three, three ways of generating appointment here in TLG. So from your calls, live transfer, and from email addresses, and from voicemail. Okay? Guys, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes, yes. Okay, do you have any questions so far before I go to the Vichy dial? No, no questions so far. Okay, give me a moment, guys. I think my system. Let me just refresh my system here. Okay, give me a moment. Let me just refresh my cats. Okay. Now, next is I will show you how to log into Vichy Dial, and this will be the last part. Just give me like another 10 minutes. Okay, let me just refresh my system. Give me a moment. Okay, can you still hear me, guys? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, again, uh, next we will discuss about Vichy Dial. Okay, so this is again our Vichy Dial. It's web based, so no need to download anything. Okay, just click the link. And this is how you will transfer the call. Uh, this is how you will log in on the dialer. Okay, what happened? So this is how you will log in. Here's the procedure on logging in, so please watch closely. Okay. Okay, so this is how you will log in on the dialer, guys. You, we will ask you to log in three times for each window. Now, you will be given your individual login, and it's a four-digit number. Our password is, we are using a common password, which is ALGSC. Okay, all capital ALGSC. So, I'll show you how. Once you log in on the dialer, you need to click Agent Login. Once you click Agent Login, you will be directed to the phone login window. So you need to log in. GSC. Submit. Okay, now you're on the campaign login. But it says here you need to log in first on the time clock. So where is time clock? Time clock is right up here on the top left corner. Can you see it? Okay, can you see the time clock here? Okay, yes. Clock. Now it's changed to time clock. 
So again, one, two, three, four, you log in, whatever will be assigned to you. It can be two, three, four, five. It can be five, four, six, seven. So it depends. What's the password? A L G S C. Hit submit. Okay, log into the time clock and click back to agent login screen. Now you are on the last window, campaign login. So the password is ALGSC. And this is where you will select the campaign. Right? Like this one. Select the campaign. Okay? So since I am on a training account, I only have one campaign, which is the training test campaign. So hit submit for you to log in. Give me a sec. Do not do this. This is a training account. Okay, now it will be loading. Okay. Okay, loading, loading, loading. Okay, it will depend on your connection. It may take three days or just 30 seconds. Okay, after that, you need to click call agent web phone. Please, please call agent web phone. You need to click this. For you to be connected to the dialer. For you to be connected to the dialer, to the web phone. And you must hear a voice prompt the the voice prompt will say you are the only person in this conference let's hear that let's try got disconnected let me try again let me log in again Okay, there you go. So hit submit. Still loading. Okay, next is call agent web phone. Must be hearing. Only person in this conference. Okay, did you hear that? You are the only uh, yes. person in this conference. Okay, you must hear that to make sure that your audio is good. Okay. okay. Any questions so far? No. Try again. So hit submit, loading, call agent was phone. Currently the only person in this conference. Okay. So guys, this part of the call 
It will show you our post. It will show you our post. And this is what you need to do. Initially, it will show you our post. And then you need to click this one. For you to start taking calls because you are using a predictive dialer. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Let me share this to you just in case you needed. Just in case you need a reference. Okay, Sanjeev, do you have any question? Uh, no, nothing from my end. Okay, let's do a role play. Uh, the two of us, Sanjeev, you will be the customer. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. So let's use this campaign for the role play. Okay, I chatted uh, the campaign and Skype, kindly check it. So Sanjeev, can, can, yes. you, see the, the, can you see the campaign in Skype? Uh, it's uh, still loading up, just give me a second. Did you see it? Uh, no, I think it's uh, taking time to load from your end. Did you add a picture along with it? Oh, can you see? Uh, can you see it on my screen? Yeah, I can see it on your screen. Okay, so the campaign is LA Orange. The calendar. What's the calendar number? Uh, just give me one second. It is too small. Uh, is it uh, it's too small for me to read out? It's okay, ending it's with 74, four. and the monthly minimum price is 325, and the company name is Ultimate Cleaning Solution. Okay, okay, so let's do this. Ring, ring. Hi, this is Olivia, Hello. and I'm looking for the person in charge of the cleaning in your office, please. Will that be you? Ah, uh, yes, that is me. Thank you, sir, for taking my call. Uh, can I have your full name, please? Uh, it's Sanjeev Hujuri. Thank you, uh, Sanjeev. And are you uh, the owner or manager for Omnificent? Uh, I'm the owner. Oh, you're the owner. I see. And you're the person in charge of the cleaning as well, right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, thank you so much, Sanjeev. Actually, again, my name is Olivia, and I'm with Ultimate Cleaning Solutions. We're a local janitorial company, and uh, the reason why I'm calling you is because our sales representative will be in your area next week. Uh, Sanjeev, do you have like five or ten minutes of the time? So our sales rep can do a walkthrough in your office and take a cleaning location for your uh, janitorial needs. Will you be available next week for a five to ten minutes? Yes, I... Oh, perfect. And let me ask, are you doing outsource or in-house? Uh, yes. okay. Do you already have a cleaning company in place or you're just doing it on your own? Uh, we are doing it on our own. We do not have I see. Are you? 
Are you actively seeking to outsource your janitorial services now or in the near future? Ah, uh, yes, in near future. Oh, perfect. And how many, how frequent do you want the cleaning to be done? Uh, could be once a week. Okay, once a week. And let me tell you, Sanjeev, that our once a week cleaning is $325 per month. Would that be fine with you? Okay. Okay. So at this time, uh, Sanjeev, uh, I'll, I'm going to connect your call to my scheduling manager so we can set the date and time of your appointment next week. Okay, can you hold on, on the line for me? Uh, sure. Okay. So guys, please take uh, check my, my uh, screen here. Before I connect to Chris, I type here I for in-house, 1X for the frequency, and 74 is the calendar number. So you need to type this on the comment box before you transfer it to Chris. Okay. Hi, Chris. I have a friend here, Hujuri here, and he is the owner of Omniscient Infotech. He's the one in charge for cleaning. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Sanjeev. Have a great day. Of you. Have a nice day. Have a great rest of your day. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Do I deserve a clap? Okay, that's how you do it, guys. We've trained for almost two hours, but on your call, it will just be like one minute or two minutes, okay? okay. So, Sanjeev, uh, let's chat offline regarding your plans for Monday, okay? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so, everyone, thank you very much for your time. I hope you learned and you enjoyed the training. Have a good night and happy weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.